Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Today we're learning about tectonic plates, which was the worksheet you guys were supposed to be doing for the last couple days that you struggled with, right? So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm gonna go over all the answers, and you're gonna learn everything. All right? You know. Now you're famous. You're in the video forever. Now you are. You just decided to be annoying and shut up. Yeah. All right. Let's get started. These are all the vocab words that you already have been working on. I'm going to skip through this, and then there's the annoying. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, the worksheet thing we did. Bing bong. Okay. Let's start from the beginning with the story I already started telling you about. So there's these two scientists. I'm only going to talk about this guy. There's Henry Hess and Alfred Wegener, which were scientists that were had an idea a long time ago. Hear me out. What if all the continents were hanging out together? He saw all the continents and he's like, you know what? They kind of look like they fit together. And he went to all his friends and he's like, this is my idea, guys. What do you think? And they're like, we're scientists. Unless you have proof, we call you crazy and shun you. Shun the non believer. Isn't that a YouTube video? Um, I think. I think it is. So then he set out on a little journey to find evidence, which I, you guys were supposed to do. He didn't even have all those maps. All he had there was a plane and he flew to places and try to figure out proof that the land has been moving. The hypothesis was called the hypothesis of continental drift. Not Tokyo drift, continental drift, where the land is slowly moving. Uh, that's what you have to know. Alpha Wagner was credited with the first one that had the idea, okay? He didn't prove it, but he tried to. So that's what he thought it kind of all looked like. Obviously, that's not pretty. Literally, I just took an image off Google and smashed them all together myself. I probably didn't do a good of a job. But he thought all of them a long time ago were all put together. He had a name for it. Does anyone remember what the name for it was? Ryder. And Gia, or I don't, maybe that's, hopefully that's how you actually say it. And I haven't been saying it wrong my entire life. Uh, it's spelled really weird. It's spelled like Pangea or something like that. But, okay. I don't know why I put this in here. I'm gonna blame Mr. Gandalf. Okay. Okay. So his first idea was to travel to different places where it looked like it matched up to check the minerals and see if the minerals lined up. So he found coal deposits and minerals in different mountain ranges, and the mountain ranges in like South Africa, there, Africa and South America matched up perfectly. They're the exact same mineral deposits in two different locations, obviously thousands of miles apart, which didn't make sense unless one time they were together. He also, what else? Yeah, not ranges. We'll just stick with that. No, back, bad, bad. Also, the biggest one for me, which was very easy on the worksheets, were the fossils. He went to a lot of paleontologists and he found fossils all over the world. Like in this picture, I'll show you the picture. It might make it easier. There's these giant brachiosauruses and tyrannosauruses. Now they can swim, but they can't swim across the entire Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. So how'd they get there if they're the same animal? So at one point, they had to have been able to walk across the continent. So they had to at least been touching. Down here, stegosauruses, there's no way, unless they were touching at one point. And even more so, the plants in Antarctica. How do plants grow in Antarctica? They can't. You can't grow plants where it's that freezing cold. It's impossible. So the plants had to have been grown in a warmer climate. So either one, the earth was tilted a different way where the equator was down here or something like that, or Antarctica was just further up this way and it slowly moved down over time. So he, he started getting lots of pieces of evidence. And so he had mountain ranges, minerals, fossils, that all sort of suggest that the things were closer together and all closer towards the equator. There's that Pangea thing. This is obviously a computer thing. Right here, this is India smashing into Asia. Oh, I didn't do it. That's how the mountains were made. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, Alfred gathered, he like spent his entire life going around getting all this information and he brings it back. He's like, I did it guys. I found 
that they do, they did move. And then his friend said, okay. But how? But how? <laughs> how, how did it move? If you can't tell me how it moved, then uh, wait, what is it? Magic fairy dust? Little lizards pushing the crust from underneath the earth? What is it? Yes. So unless usually, unless you can, you can, you can give evidence, but unless you can give how it actually happened, how is he going to prove it's right? So Alfred, unfortunately, he died thinking that he never figured it out. Yep. Okay. Now it's time for a, a really quick history lesson. Lord. History is important. I'm going to get Mr. Stalin here no. and Mr. Boxer and no. hear you say that. No. Mr. Boxer, no. This is an interesting history lesson. I go quick. I go quick. Has anyone ever heard of something, uh, a little small event that happened in history called World War II? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So... There was something called, and I could be very going very off top of it, there was something called the German Wolf Pack, which was a German unit of submarines that was destroying all the ships in the Atlantic Ocean. Any ship, cargo ship, uh, civilian vessel that was going across the Atlantic Ocean was just getting blown up. Everything going across the Atlantic Ocean, you had a risk of getting blown up by the German submarines. So they started using on a lot of the battleships what is something they can use to try to figure out what's underneath the water? Yes. Close. It has to do with vibrations. Kind of. There's another word for it. It's not up there. It's not radar. Radar's up in the air, but what's underneath the water? Water. Starts with an S. What? Nope. That's okay, I got you. It's the same thing we use to find fishies underwater. A fishing pole! Sonar! Sonar! Thank you! Sonar! So it's that same sort of thing where it sends a sound wave underwater, it bounces off. Say my name. As me sit down. There you go. And so they started using that to find the submarines and destroy them. But after World War II, they used sonar even more because they realized I can use sonar to find everything down there. So they started mapping the entire ocean floor. They took scientific vessels out there and sonars and they just went in straight lines and mapped the ocean floor. Just mapped everything. So they would send the, the vibration down, it would ping up, see how deep it is, see if there's anything there. When they got to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, they found something. They're like, whoa, there's something huge down there. And no, it's not a big shark. What? No. So there was something poking up at them. There was like something like a mountain underwater. And they found that it, they, they turned their ship and they went vertical through the Atlantic. And it goes all the way up the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's one of the biggest underwater mountain ranges in the world. And it's not a trench. Trenches go deep. This was called, they called it the Atlantic Mid-Ocean Ridge. Ridge kind of means mountain. It's not like a super big mountain, but it's a little mountain that goes along the entire middle of the Atlantic Ocean. They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We gotta go figure out what this is. They send their scientists down there, grab a couple of rocks and analyze it. And we'll, I'll show you how to figure out how old the rock is later. But they found the rocks at that mountain were brand new, Danny. They were brand new. Baby rocks. They found where baby rocks are made. So then they went a little further away from the ridge and the rocks were a little older. A little further away, and it was a little older. A little further away, it was a little older. So it came from the ridge and it slowly moved away from it. So they found out because the rocks get older, the further away they go from the ridge, that land has to be moving from that spot. And if you stay down there long enough, you will actually see you don't see it split apart, but little cracks open up and magma seeps up, makes new baby rock, and the land keeps slowly moving away from it. So it was sonar and going down to these mid-ocean ridges that proved that the crust does move. And Alfred Wegener, even though he died, was right. Stop. Choke. Yep, there's the mid-ocean ridge. It's kind of like a giant zipper if you think about it. When you undo a zipper, the magma comes out and then it zips back up and cools down and breathes and forms again.
All right? You do have to know what mid-ocean ridges are. They are long chains of undersea mountains. They're in the middle of the ocean. That's why they call it mid-ocean. Right, Brody, who's paying attention? Great, thank you, Brody. This is, and this is where they're all at. These are all lines in the middle of the ocean that go around the entire world, like baseball scenes on a baseball. All around the world. So basically, wherever these are, the crust is going out away from them, and new baby rock is being formed right at those seams. Oh, so that's where they are? That's, that's where they are. They're there right now. They don't move. So, the idea that the floor, the crust is spreading away from those points is called sea floor spreading. Mold rock comes up through the cracks, it hardens, and spreads out like a conveyor belt. Got it? You have to know the idea of sea floor spreading is that the sea floor spreads. Yes? When it spreads, does it get like bigger? It technically, what do you mean, like the whole sea floor? Yeah. It gets. That's actually a good point. I'll talk about that in a second. But if you ever, I don't. I, this might not be super appropriate for the video. But whenever people wanted to remember this, they always thought of like taking a poopy. You take a poopy, the butt cheeks go in, and then the poop goes come out. That's what the baby rock comes out. It's like a poop. And yeah. Everyone always remembers it once I say that, so. It's where Earth is taking a poop, alright? Yeah. Okay, so to so Reagan's point, let me just see where Matt The video's gonna be too long. And that's gonna be forever to upload. All right. So this is the map I gave you, and they mapped how old the rocks were, and this is how they figured out that it's actually spreading out from these seams. Yes, thank you, Reagan. All right, all right, wait, wait. So Reagan's question was really good. So if the new rock is always coming, being born and coming up, is Earth getting bigger? Yes. Yeah, Respect. If new baby rock is being formed at this, does Earth keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? Wait, what happens if that's about this? It, the, it spreads apart, magma comes up, new rock gets formed. Is Earth getting bigger? Yeah. It's not getting bigger. Because there's a place where rock is born, and there's a place where rock goes to die. Oh, oh nice. Where where it is? So basically, the rocks are being formed in the middle of the ridge. They're, they're born here, and as they go closer to land, That Marianas Trench is where they go to die. All ocean trenches are where they go to die. So let me just show you something. I'll come back to this. Okay, so we get this and this. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Okay, is this an ocean plate or a land plate? Ocean plate. La, 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 la. Move. Is this a land plate or an ocean plate? Land. land. All right, so this about the crust. <laughs> Which one's heavier? Ocean. Ocean is heavier. Even though it's thinner, it's waterlogged. This one's heavy. 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 So when they're coming together, the land plate's going to smash into the ocean plate. The heavier one goes back down into the ground. So when an ocean plate runs into a land plate, it goes to die in the mantle. And right where it goes down, that's called the trench. A deep ocean trench. It makes a deep valley. So all ocean plates go underneath land plates to die. So they're born at the mid-ocean ridge, and when they hit land, they go back underneath to die. And it's like a little life cycle. Rocks are born, rocks are killed. Rocks are born, rocks are killed. So you can't kill a rock unless you melt it. Okay. Let me go back. No, that doesn't kill a rock. It just makes babies... Um, okay, so when an ocean plate or any plate goes underneath, it's called subduction. It means going underneath. Subduction is when a denser, heavier earth plate meets another earth plate and one goes underneath. I guess an ocean plate. Okay, let's see. Um, no, we're gonna keep going. So this is a map of all the trenches and the ridges. The trenches are where they die, the ridges are where they're born. 
So notice that does does Florida get any earthquakes? No. Nope. Does they have any volcanoes? No. Nope. Does anyone know where on this map most volcanoes and earthquakes happen at? In the Hawaii. Okay. Asia. Pause it for one second. Good. Yeah. All right. Gino, there's three types of boundaries, all right? A boundary is where two things meet, like a fence, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's three types of plate boundaries, all right? I don't know if I went over this, but a tectonic plate is a giant piece of crust, a piece of the lithosphere, Annie and Sophia. Pay attention, pay, pay attention, all right? So there's basically all over Earth, the lithosphere, the crust, has cracks in it, which are the boundaries. So there's three types. There's a type where they go away from each other. Divergent boundaries go away from each other. Those are the mid-ocean ridges where the new baby rockets form. There's a type where they come together. They're called converge, convergent boundaries, where they smash into each other. And then there's a type where they slide past each other called transform boundaries. And each one is special and has something special with it. We'll start with this one. Convergent boundaries. The one where they smash, smash together. Alright? So just like the hoods on this car, when they smash together, they kind of fold up. And that's how all the mountains were made, Thomas. Every single mountain was made when two continental land plates smashed into each other. Because usually when two land plates smash into each other, one doesn't go underneath because they're both kind of the same density and heaviness. So they smash and fold up and they make mountains. But when two smash into each other and one is an ocean plate, remember the ocean plate's heavier, so it sinks underneath. Let's see, does everyone remember what it's called when one plate goes underneath? Yes. Subduction is correct. Thank you for the one person that's paying attention. Annie, Esme, I'm not gonna say it again. Sit. That, that's exactly why I'm asking you to sit there. Okay. Like I said, when one plate, when the ocean plate goes underneath, it does often make the volcanoes right above it. That's usually where volcanoes are made, right where the ocean plate goes underneath. Okay, any questions about the ones that smash together? No, the last two. Hulk smash? You sure? Yeah. Well, what's the landform that two land plates make when they smash together? Continental volcano. Nope, when they smash together. When two Mountain land plates. Huh? Mountain range, thank you very much. Yeah. Good job, come on, reading the board. Okay, like I said, there, remember the two types of crust, the ocean crust is thicker, or not, it's thinner but denser, so it goes underneath. I'm gonna skip that. Um, we're gonna skip that too. No, sorry. You guys can watch it on your own time. Divergent, spreading apart. This is actually a picture from Iceland. Iceland actually has a divergent plate boundary running through the entire country. So the entire country is literally splitting in half. Um, but remember, plates don't move, I'll get to that in a second, plates don't move that fast, they move about the speed of your fingernails grow. So they're not moving a whole lot every year. Um, yes, yeah. so if there's a divergent boundary, where there's land instead of water, usually they're at the mid-ocean ridges, it makes a valley usually in the middle. Okay, we keep going. This is another picture. Found at usually the mid-ocean ridges and rift valleys, plates move apart and magma comes up. Baby rock formed at divergent boundaries. Good? Good. And yes, okay. Oh. This is a picture, does anyone know what this is? Probably not. This is a transform boundary where they're sliding past each other. This is literally a picture, you can see the two plates. You can see the line. This is a transform boundary where they're sliding past each other. So usually, are rocks usually very smooth or jagged? Jagged. Yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. perfectly smooth. They're gonna have cracks and they get, they get caught. So if there's two megaton, crazy heavy pieces of crust that are trying to slide past each other, it kind of gets stuck and then it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and eventually it lets go and maybe moves just a foot. But an entire piece of crust moving a foot causes an entire city to go away. An earthquake that strong. So transform boundaries often have very strong earthquakes at them.
This is a picture of the San Andreas Fault in California. California gets a ton of earthquakes because they have a giant fault or a giant boundary going straight through the, the state. Do we have that? No. That's why Florida doesn't have a plate boundary anywhere near it, so we don't have earthquakes, we don't have volcanoes. We have hurricanes. Um, the Caribbean, though, I think uh, by Haiti and Puerto Rico, like a little south of there, there is a plate boundary there, I think. It's a divergent one, so sometimes they get earthquakes. Whenever there's an earthquake underwater, remember, that's a cause for a tsunami a lot of times, so you gotta be careful. California? California's earthquakes are usually on land because the, the line, let me see if I can get the picture again. The line, the line is actually on the land. If the line was out in the water, the earthquakes happen, California gets tsunamis all the time. That's why Japan, Japan's like right in here. Earthquakes happen all the time out in the water and Japan gets a ton of tsunamis. Wait, so wait, Japan gets around? tsunamis? Can't you just walk around a tsunami? No. Tsunami goes across very the whole country. Yeah. Bro. Can't you just walk around tsunami? You know, uh, after this video, I'll pull up what a tsunami looks like. Alright, where are we at? Alright, remember, all of this plate movement is caused by the magma moving by convection in the mantle. And oftentimes, at those divergent boundaries, the convection cells kind of push up in the same spot, and the magma comes out. Right? It hoops out, right, Celine? Uh, right? Right. Thank you for paying attention so much, Curtis. It's very nice. Are you paying a lot? Uh huh. All right. I don't need this one. All right, let's do a little quiz. You can pause it for a second. They don't move very fast, one to 10 centimeters per year, which is like this much. And it was very hard to obviously prove, besides the rock age, that they were moving. But now we have satellites that can literally in, like, see how much each plate moves per year. It's very accurate. Um, it's pretty cool. Oh, I want to own one. Yeah, you want to own a satellite? Yeah. No. Once again, we start off with what we think is Pangea a long time ago. And the continent has drifted over time because of convection in the mantle, moving the crust. Oh, that's Oh, also, remember, I don't know if you know this, but there's something called the Ring of Fire. It's because all over the outside of the Pacific Ocean, there's a lot of those trenches, the convergent where an ocean plate goes underneath. That's where most of the volcanoes are made, and it hasn't happened, so, so in, let's see if I can do this real quick. There is a, the baby rock is getting formed, like, right here, and it's all going out this way. And then, when it hits the land, this is where, the, I'll do the red line, this is where all the baby rock is going to die. So that's why the ocean plate goes underneath, it makes a volcano, and that's why they call it the ring of fire. There's also a lot of earthquakes that happen all over this. Anytime where you have two plates moving, you're gonna have an earthquake. Have a tsunami. If, it, if the earthquake is underwater or near water, probably. Oh, okay. We all done? I think we're done. So this last, last slide is literally a map of all the plates, their direction that they're moving, if it's a divergent, a convergent, or transform plate boundary. I think I have a worksheet with this for you guys tomorrow. Uh oh. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Chrysler. But, um, okay. Oh. Remember these last two pages. I literally took all the information from all 40 slides that I just went through and put them on two slides. So if you need a quick little refresher, you just read that. Okay. Or study that, or ask questions about this. Yeah. You can edit that.